there will not be another Calvary. Let me explain to you this. In one other tremendous visitation, when Jesus appeared to me, this is what he did. The first thing he did in the sky, of course he prepared the crown, but he showed me the nail-pierced hand. Let me now get a little deeper with you. When he appeared to me in the sky, the first thing before he spoke is that he prepared the crown, of course, and showed me the nail-pierced hand. Meaning, run to Trinidad and Tobago and tell them that, look, these days I have scars. I cannot go back. Tell them that these days I am already with defect. And yet the requirements of God for any sacrifice to redeem man, it must be without defect. He said, go and tell them that you saw these things. Let them just use the first Calvary and be delivered. Tell them, uh -uh, even if I look at the condition of the church and I feel like I can go back for her, but I cannot be accepted. I cannot be allowed at all. These days I have scars all over. The wounds and the scars. I cannot make the perfect sacrifice without effect. I cannot. And yet when I entered here today, and I sat there, and then I realized something. I realized that this church is busy crying out to God the Father, Lord, Lord, send Jesus back to the cross. Look, we are born again, but we are not yet delivered. Ah! We are still walking here showing our legs. That men may last at our legs. Lord, please, no, 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 you must go back. In other words, when Jesus looks at the church here, he hears people saying, nail him, nail him, nail him, give us Barnabas, but kill him, that thug. He hears the pain of the nails again. Ah! Excuse me. Did you understand now? Oh yes. That's why I come. He warned about the abuse of the grace. He says, you have even received the Holy Spirit. You are even aware of the powers of the coming kingdom. And then, you have decided to go back and live like the world. The world is showing their legs. The world is loving money. You are doing those things. The world is lying. You are lying also. The world is in sin. You are in sin. The world is in abortion. You are aborting also. The world is entertaining the love of money and for which they can kill. And you too. Then he's saying that no, no, there has to be a difference between the children of God washed by the perfect blood and the world. There has to be. And look at this now. There's something very important I want to bring to you. Can you allow me to do that? There's something key. Can I, can I do that? I have to do. Let me read to you some of the few things that the blood separated us from. Then I'll give you the ultimate. I'll shock you why I came. Let me read it. Now, this is what he says. Look at this now. He says, No, I need to read two only two. There's no time. He says, John chapter, that's first John chapter 3, verse 10. He came to separate us, to remove us from being children of Satan to children of God. And then, he, John chapter 5, verse 24, he came to remove us, to separate us from death. To life. And then 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 18 He came to remove us from those who are perishing to those who are saved. And then John chapter 3 verse 16 same thing from perishing to eternal life. And then 2 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 16 He says he came to remove us from death unto death to life unto life. <laughs> then he came John chapter 8 verse 12 from darkness to light. And then he says First Thessalonians chapter 5, from night to day. And then 
in John chapter 3 verse 18 from condemnation to now justify. Ah! Can I read another? Oh, it's enough. 2 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 14 from unrighteousness unto righteousness. And when you read on and on, just go into your Bible and look at what Jesus removed us from. But when you read on and on, you never hear the Bible saying that he came to remove us from this and put us in the middle between darkness and light. Excuse me. Nobody heard me. When I read on, and you can go to the Bible and make your own list. When you read on and on, you never hear him say that I came to remove you from this and put you in the middle ground. Never ever. Why is this church living in the middle ground? Why are you living between darkness and light? Because if you have been delivered, you cross. You cross over. Excuse me. I have gone through the Bible. I have never found a place where he said, uh, I kept to remove them from light towards darkness, but just to put them in the gray area here. Hey! Who told you that? Who said it? What gospel is that? Is that the modernism of Trinidad and Tobago? Uh -uh. For me, he made me a preacher of the rurals. A village preacher in Africa. And I love it. Because down there we love the Lord. We choose him total. Holy. Complete. We are not divided between the world and the Lord. I, I don't know which way to go. On this. No. They choose and cross over. You can make your own list. Look at the entire Bible. Even in the Old Testament, look at the prophecies that foretold about the coming of the Messiah. And what he would remove people from. But never ever do you find a place saying that he put them in the middle ground. Hey, hey! Why is Trinidad and Tobago leaving her salvation in the middle ground? Tight trousers. Women, tight trousers here for men worshipping eh, to see your anatomy. Ah! Excuse me. Which God? Ah. How can you? How dare you? How dare you touch on the cross? Yes, how dare you touch the blood? And then you come and sell the blood. The whole of this area is full of people selling the blood at market price. Oh, yes. I did not find that in the gospel. In fact, I found him saying that he shall separate us from that. But to put us in a place where we are born again, but we will still do a little bit of that. That I did not find. There is no middle ground in the separation that the blood of Jesus brought. And that's why I have come. Because when you read Hebrews chapter 6, 4 to 6, he warns on the abuse of the grace. And he warns the church. The church. He does not want some Muslims or some Hindu people, whatever. He wants the children of Jehovah. And I said, wow, how awesome then that he gives that warning. Because it is high time. And I said, how can the Muslims dress holier than the church? How? Then how will you evangelize them? How will you tell them about Jesus? How, how, how will you start? They'll say, wow. You want my wife to show her legs? Never ever. You say, no, I'd rather worship the God I know. That, that Jesus of yours said. And then when they turn on TV, they find the blood being sold. Oh, put 50 here. These are the tricks. My trick is 58. My trick is 58. When I gave somebody 58, 100, I, I told the Lord, kill me if this is not right. Throw me down if this is not right, Lord. Restrain me. Do something to hurt me so I don't do it. And I heard the Lord saying, if this is your seed, sow it. If this is your harvest, then you are done. And then I just gave, and then someone appeared with a key of a private aeroplane like this. Ah! Which kind of gospel in the Caribbean? Who bewitched you? Who bewitched you? How come when you received Jesus, 
you did not bother to receive the Holy Spirit to guide you and give you counsel. Some of them, when you want to invite them here, they will say, money down. Money down. And then I asked you this. I said this. In the Caribbean, I said this to you. I said, if you go into the Bible and you find that Jeremiah, when God sent him, he asked for money down, then please continue giving money down. I said, if you find that Isaiah, when the Lord sent him to Israel, he put money down. He asked them for money down, then continue. That money down might take you to some heaven. If you find that Jeremiah and Malachi ask for money down, please don't stop it, continue. But if you find in the Bible that they did not, then the question is, who bewitched you? Oh yes, that's why I come. I said it all. Because I said, no, you just come and worship the Lord. But you cannot always come here that you see, let me do my hairstyle. I want to do like this for the pastor to see me. You cannot do that with Hindu hair. You cannot do that thing. No, because they give it as a gift. You know when they go for purification? They go for purification in the Hindu temple. And they shave all the head. And they come out, they feel purified without hair now. And then they leave them. Then there is a wise man there who says, can I take care of the garbage of the temple? And then he collect the hair and then he send the hair to the right place. <laughs> Hallelujah. No, 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 no. I come that I may tell you the truth that you may enter the kingdom of my God. Because I see that in the Caribbean, I don't know what happened, whether postmodernism or whatever. Somehow you mixed up everything together. But the Lord is saying very clearly that there must be a complete deliverance. You cannot say that now you see me, I, I am still working progress. You cannot work in progress here. You cannot work in progress here. No. He says ultimate power it's a question of your will. Yes, you say work in progress because you just want some time to keep in sin. Oh yes, because my God went to the cross and he finished it. He did not leave a balance. And I see you, you still keep paying some balance for your deliverance. Which they tell you Jesus did not finish. Hebrews chapter 6, 4 to 6. That scripture warns the church on the abuse of the grace. He says, it is impossible. And I said, if I were you and I made the word impossible, I just underlined it. Meaning, it will not be possible. God has said it. Ah, that means today is a day of love. Yes, because today now he's opening your eyes to that. That conversation is to the church. But if you read Hebrews chapter 10, verse 26, 31, same warning. Hebrews 10, 26, 31, same. Same, look at what he says here. Hebrews 10, 26 to 31. Are you there? He says, if we deliberately, if I were you and I meet the word deliberately, I underline it. Meaning, you know that that is sin and you decide to go to it. Can we move on now? If we deliberately keep on sinning, I need to find it also. Yes, if we deliberately keep on sinning after we've received the knowledge of the truth, no sacrifice for sins is left. He says, again, no, no, yeah, uh, no sacrifice for sins is left, but only a fearful expectation of judgment and of raging fire that will consume the enemies of God. And he says, anyone who rejected the laws of Moses, the law of Moses, died without mercy at the testimony of one or two, or rather of two or three witnesses. How much more severely do you think a man deserves to be punished? Who has trampled the Son of God underfoot? Who has treated as an holy thing the blood of the covenant that sanctified him? He says, and who has insulted the spirit of grace, abused the grace. Then he moves on to say, for we know him who said, it is mine to avenge. And he says, I will repay. And again, the Lord will judge his people. It is a dreadful thing to fall into the hands of the living God judging you. 
in Hebrew, in, in, not Hebrew, but in uh, Spanish, he says, horrenda cosa. Meaning, it's horrendous to fall in the hands of God judging you. It is not a nice experience at all. You'd rather be running away from the devil to the Lord. But how about if now the Lord turns against you? You understand what he's saying? Where will you run to? Now here, he says, taking the blood of Jesus, throwing down and trampling. There you go now. Meaning, you say, uh -uh. for me, the blood is not enough. Yeah, no, no, no. I still want to live with a man without marriage or with a woman without marriage. No, me, uh, the blood is not enough. I, I still allow my son to run around with women when they are born again. And I tell, ah, you know, children, that's their age. That age, they do that. Hey, how can you do that? That is the second warning on the abuse of the grace. The third one is Second Peter chapter 2, verses 19 to 21, to 22. 19 to 22. Second Peter chapter 2, 19 to 22. But that one, he becomes even more aggressive, more brutal, because he says, a dog that has vomited returns to its vomit, licking and eating it. Oh yes. When we receive Jesus and then we decide to go back to the vomit. Hallelujah. That's why I am here. I told you the message of the golden glorious wedding rings in the sky. That vision, the foundational message that gave birth to this revival. That message is a message of purification. It begins with repentance. It's a message of turning away from sin in the church. Let nobody lie to you that no, there is there for no condemnation for those who are Christ Jesus. Hey, excuse me. Is that passport to sin? Does that allow you to live in church with sin? Those who are in Christ Jesus are holy people. Because Christ Jesus is holy the holy son of the living god let your living water flow for my soul let your holy spirit come and take control
My son, Manangu, Dr. Makwengo, Dr. Makwengo, you have seen how Kenya is bathing in the glory of God. What can you tell Kenya in two minutes? We don't have time. I am very serious about these words, Baba. Nime manisha sana kuyahusu haya maneno, Baba. Kenya do not know who is in the land. Kenya hawajui ni nani aliye katika inchi. And because the Lord has revealed Angola who is in the land. Na kwa sababu Bwana amefungulia Angola ni nani aliye katika inchi. Elijah moved from Bethel to Gilgal to Jordan to go. Elia alitoka Bethel Gilgal kwenda Yorodani kwenda. So the prophet of the Lord is moving from here to a double portion of revival in Angola for the church to enter. Kwa hivyo nabii wa Mungu anatoka hapa kwenda Angola kwa upako madadufu ili kanisa lipate kuingia. I see Kenya is open. Ninaona Kenya hii wazi. I see Kenya is ready. Ninaona Kenya hii tayari. But Angola is not yet ready. Lakini Angola haiko tayari bado. Time is finished. Na wakati umekwisha. Time is over. Wakati umeisha. Please release the prophet to Angola. Tafadhali achilieni nabii aje Angola. Please let the valuable mighty man of God, the one sent by God to come to Angola. Tafadhali wachilieni nabii mkuu wa Mungu aliyetumwa na Mungu aje kule Angola pia. Let me tell you something. Hebu niwaambie kitu. If you don't know. Kama mjui. The Bible. Biblia. Then you don't know what's happening here. Mimi si zaba inafanyika hapa. But we know what is happening here. This is he that was sent to prepare the way of the Lord and make straight the path. Angola knows. Angola knows. Angola knows. Angola knows. We have come to Makuja to take him so that he may prepare us. Papa, thank you. Papa, thank you. Asante baba. I have agreed I'm going to Angola. Nimekubali ninaenda Angola. So Angola can also enter. Ili Angola ipate